Today, I'm gonna be embarrassing myself for the sake of your education. <laughs> I've been a small business owner since 2020. I've been featured on Business Insider. I have almost 100,000 followers across all these platforms, and I didn't pay for a single ad. Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name's Tammy. I'm a clay artist, but I also go by uncomfy because you girl's a little anxious. I make cozy art to help comfort others, and I get this question all the time. How do you market yourself as an artist or business owner on social media? Maybe you're a perfectionist or you're very anxious about the idea of posting yourself online. Or maybe you've already started posting but it feels like no one wants to watch. I have a lot of advice to give on this topic. So today I thought it'd be a fun idea if instead of just telling you what I did, I'm gonna be showing you my early social media posts, like my very first Instagram photos, stories, videos. And we're gonna be critiquing my own social media posting and how my strategy has changed over the years to reach more people. As always with these types of videos, there'll be chapters below, so feel free to skip around. And also, I just know that this video will be a bitch to edit, so please like, comment, and subscribe. When I first started posting on social media, I was so awkward and anxious and uncomfy. And that's actually where my brand name comes from. I was already an anxious personality, but putting myself out there made me so super uncomfy that I just sort of had to embrace it. And that's what I hope for you. When you first start posting on social media, odds are you're gonna be super anxious and uncomfy too. You might even get a little bit sweaty and that's where Native comes in. Before we get on with this video, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Native. If you don't know Native, they make aluminum-free, paraben-free, cruelty-free, vegan deodorants made with simple and effective ingredients that you know, like shea butter and coconut oil. I've actually been a long-time user of Native way before I got the sponsorship, and like I've been saying this whole time, I'm a very uncomfy, sweaty gal, so I've used a lot of deodorants in my time. And Native is by far my favorite because it's not sticky, it's not greasy, it doesn't leave a residue and native protects you from odor all day with 72 hour effectiveness which is perfect for everyday use whether you're working out or just making youtube videos like me <laughs> and native has so many scents to choose from i have three of them here cucumber and mint is my og favorite i've been using this one for like three years now it's super light it's not overpowering and it keeps you smelling fresh all day coconut and vanilla is a classic it smells so warm and yummy and i decided to try something new which is jasmine and cedar. I took a chance on this one because typically I don't really like floral smells, but this one is so airy and light and it genuinely smells like the sweetest jasmine tea from your favorite boba shop. Native also offers a plastic free version of their packaging so you can get the same formula just with a more sustainable packaging. So if you're in the market for a new deodorant, body wash, or lotion, go to the link down in my description and use code UNCOMFY for 20% off your first Native purchase. This offer is available available site-wide, but it's only available for a limited time, so go now and save some money. And thank you, Native, for sponsoring this video. Okay, so we're at my computer now. I'm gonna be showing you my earliest Instagram posts and videos. It just occurred to me that some of these, I may have to strip down the audio just because of copyright, so I hope that doesn't ruin the experience for you, but the advice and the lessons that I'm gonna share remain the same regardless. Let's get started. Oh my gosh. This is my Instagram. So at the time of recording, I have 99.7 thousand followers, which is crazy, but as you can see, I have 337 posts, so your girl was working. Your girl was posting pretty regularly but we are gonna go all the way down to where it all started my very first posts and this is what my Instagram first looked like in 2020 <laughs> this was my first post ever um Oh my gosh. So this is my crybaby radish spirit keychain, <laughs> but I edited it so that it's all blurry and weird looking. And the caption is, life is a blur. At least that's what our little radish friends here say. So it's not just crybaby, it's dumpling radish with its big lips. And it's also this radish character that never really came into fruition. But as you can see, no hashtags here, just like funny photo, I guess. I don't even think it's that funny now that I'm looking at it. 
Okay, it's a little funny. And here's the second thing that I posted, which was concept sketches of our radish friends. So at the time, I started uncomfy with my friend and I was the one managing the social media and she was only with me for like two months before she left. So that's why a lot of the captions are spoken in like the plural tense, like our instead of my. But um, yeah, concept sketches of our radish friends. The legend goes that these radishes lost their stems, so they like to put things on top of their heads and this makes them feel a little less uncomfy. Now I actually think that I did a good job when posting this because it's showing the process of making the character like these are all the different forms that we played with. These are all the different expressions that we're playing with. Literally just horrible quality <laughs> the worst quality photos of an iPad screen, not even a screenshot, but a picture of the screen. So I really think when you're first starting out, really just viewing social media as a documentation of your process, whether that's concept sketches or your packaging. My packaging looks so different now. My packaging is way more professional now, but this is this is what it looked like. And I captioned it, lots of love going out with these packages. Another crybaby radish going out to find a new home today. They grow up so fast. I think I really started curating a personality that doesn't take myself too seriously, that clearly puts a lot of love and care into these really shitty packages. I literally didn't take myself seriously at all. Like, look at this. This one. It's a very bad edit of my crybaby in Costco. I just posted things because I thought they were funny because I recognize that if I don't bring some sort of value, no one's gonna stick around. So the value I brought to the table when I literally had less than like 200 followers was that I brought little moments of cuteness and humor to people's days. And I think cuteness and humor can go hand in hand super, super well. Just think of human nature, like and people go to social media to take their mind off of things. So if it's humorous, if it's cute, then I think it grabs people's attention. And clearly this one worked because it has 200 likes, whereas compared to my first couple of posts, they only had like 90 likes, 100 likes, 100 likes. So yeah, I think a huge mistake that a lot of businesses make when they start posting on social media is that they take themselves way too seriously and you can see it on a lot of business instagrams it's only like perfectly curated photos all either graphic design or professional photo shoots and what you have to realize is that yes you can be serious about your art but without the credibility of a lot of likes views or followers you need to provide value and whether that value is you just being 10 times more amazing than everyone else which is a little unrealistic that value you provide can be something as simple as humor or your story and that goes into the next big mistake I made in these early days on Instagram is that I wasn't showing myself like look at these There's no pictures of me the artist like the sole person that I'm expecting people to support They never saw my face. They just saw my work and at first that's what I thought I wanted But as I slowly began to build my brand I realized just how important the artist is in the art itself Especially in my niche or the market that I'm targeting. I'm a small business So I'm targeting people who purchase things for the humanity of it. They purchase it because it's handmade by a person that they want to support. But I wasn't showing the human behind the work. That's when I first started posting videos. And I want to be clear, you do not have to show your face. There's plenty of successful small businesses that seldom show their face and they just do voiceovers. But I think you at least have to have one of the two. You can either have a voiceover telling your process and your story without showing your face, or you can just show your face and not do a voiceover but just do captions and I've seen both methods do extremely well for my accounts and I'll show you some of my viral videos that employ one of these methods. Obviously a mix of both is great too if you want to take the leap and start talking to the camera face to face but I feel like that's something that a lot of people are uncomfortable with so one of the two methods is a great start uh, and this is the first video I ever posted and it's going to be an Instagram reel but know that all of these are also on TikToks. So
In this video, I was just using a trending audio and putting my product footage on top of that. And while using trending audio is like a really easy way to get views sometimes, I find that these videos don't typically get a lot of engagement. Like, yes, I got a couple comments saying that these are really cute, but it's not something that stirs a conversation or builds community. I'm not sharing anything about my personal story or my purpose, my reason behind creating these characters. Like, it's just showing how cute they are. And while that's all fine and well, and it's a low effort video, this wasn't a video that went viral or made me a lot of sales. This was the first video where I showed myself and it wasn't even a video about my own products. It was just a vlog. Hi friends, I wanted to show you guys what I did today. Oh my gosh, I was so shy about doing voiceovers back then that I changed my voice. Like my voice is three octaves higher than it usually is. And I wanted to sound wispy and gentle, but now I'm just hearing it back. I'm just like, that's not what I sound like. So a couple videos after I posted that, I got a video with 40,000 views and then a video with 1 million views. So this is my first video ever to go viral. Yeah, so that was me showing the process of making frog cake earrings. I think it was like one of my very first commissions that I took on. So I showed the sketch and then I showed the final product. And I think what made this video go viral was that frog cakes were super trending at the time. I was using a trending audio. I will say there was a lot of discourse about how heavy the earrings were. In reality, my earrings are super light because they're not big at all, but the video sort of makes them look really chunky. So that helped with engagement because a lot of people were questioning like how heavy they were, are they safe for your ears? And basically anything that garners any sort of curiosity will increase your engagement and then increase your reach. So I got a ton of sales. By the way, all of my videos and all my photos were shot on my iPhone and edited on my iPhone. So it wasn't anything fancy and that's still how I manage all my social media to this day with an exception to YouTube because with YouTube I have my large camera, microphone, and I use like heavy editing software. But for Instagram and TikTok, I really only use my iPhone and that's an important thing is to remember that like you can do almost anything with a smartphone now and really just try not to get held back by technology because you have pretty much everything you need in the palm of your hand when it comes to posting on social media. We're gonna switch to my TikTok now which has 93,000 followers and 2.4 million likes. Between TikTok and Instagram I post the same videos but what I noticed is that what goes viral on one platform may just do average on another platform and vice versa. So that's why it's great to have multiple accounts across different platforms because it's like not putting all of your eggs in one basket like I've said in previous videos. So this is one of my favorite videos that I've ever posted on TikTok and it actually generated me a ton of followers and a ton of sales and it has 187,000 views. I get lots of comments asking me, what are these guys? So the story I tell myself is that these are radish spirits and some of them have lost their stems so they found different ways to cope. For example, this wizard radish found magic as a source of empowerment. Others turned towards animals for emotional support. In shape and form, they're very amorphous, but I love them that way. The reason why I love this video so much is that it's me explaining the meaning behind my characters. And I think every artist should have a video like this explaining the meaning behind their work so that people are more, so that people can connect to it and connect to you and therefore want to support you. Now I just want to go back to my Instagram. Oh my gosh, I have 99.9 thousand followers now. <laughs> That's crazy. Looking at my Instagram feed now, yes, it looks curated, it looks pretty, it looks very, very cohesive, but clearly at the start, it wasn't like that. So I just wanna summarize, don't try to be perfect. You'll learn everything with time and your aesthetic will come together as you post more and more. So I hope showing you guys all of my earliest social media posts and seeing all of my mistakes and all of my successes helped reassure you that social media isn't scary. It actually helped me increase my self-confidence by practicing putting myself out there, putting myself in front of a camera and just talking. It's helped me with my public speaking skills and ironically helped me be more comfy with being uncomfy. What I want you to take from this video is that social media is a tool for your own benefit to help build up your brand and your business and that while social media can be scary, I truly believe that at the end of the day, social media 
helped democratize being an entrepreneur and that if you can take the first big step of putting yourself out there, start sharing your story and start connecting with others, you can really, really change your life. Even in the future, if Instagram is not a thing or TikTok is not a thing, there's a different platform. I have enough trust in myself now that I'll change my style a little bit to cater to those new platforms and rules. But at the end of the day, I'm still being authentically myself and still creating the things that I want to create. The very last thing that I wanna say that I'm sure you've heard so many other creators say is to stop being afraid of being cringy. Nothing is cringy if you are trying. And of course you'll be awkward, of course your first videos won't be that good, but you'll get better with time. And to me, there's nothing more beautiful than someone pursuing their passions. I hope this video helped, maybe gave you a little more clarity on your new strategy, or maybe just took a little bit of the anxiety out of social media. If it did any of those things, I'll be happy. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, I'm uncomfy and I'll see you soon. Rusty red on her shoulder, I was cleaning her shoe. When it clicked on the trot over in the bright morning dew. We brushed and we braided dandelions and chewed. It was a mutual.